Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to the Bookworms, buddy. It is time for my June wrap up. So I did pretty good in the month of June. I read nine books. Um, None of them slipped below a four star, so I had a really good month. So let's just get started here on what we've got. So the first book I've got here is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss. I actually started this at the end of May, like I think it was the 30th, I want to say. And then I finished this like the 2nd of June. Um, I think I enjoyed this one a lot better than the first one. Um, I think a lot of people say this is like their favorites of their favorite of the series. A lot of things get amped up in this one. I love Feyre's character because I feel like she's getting stronger almost with every page of the book. I'm not going to get into this book because most people have probably really already read the series. I'm always the last one to the bandwagon, but... It is very fluid. It was a very quick read. I read it in just a few days. Um, really enjoyed it. Got my little tabbies on there. Um, I look forward to getting to the third book. The next book that I read after that one was a Story of a Girl, and this is by Sarah Czar. This book did start a little bit slow, but you got Deanna, who is in this, and she got caught with a boy by her dad. And things just kind of went downhill from there for her. Like in school, you know, word gets around because of the boy. Um, and she doesn't have a very good relationship now with her father. She's just kind of, you know, hanging by a thread right now. Um, this is a pretty good coming of age kind of story <clears throat> in this one. I did really enjoy it. It did pick up. It did get much better. Just, you know, just be aware that the beginning is a little bit slow. I ended up rating this one four stars. Oh, Court of Mist and Fury was five star read for me. The next one we've got here is The Writing Retreat. And I read this one on my Kindle. This book is by Julia Bartz. And um, this one too started a little slow for me. So you've got this woman, Rosa Vallo, who is this huge author. She's just, she's made lots of money um, writing her books. And she's having this retreat. And you're lucky if you get picked for the retreat. Well, Alex actually gets to go on this retreat. And she's a, a struggling writer. And, you know, everybody's just like groveling at Rosa's feet. And they're all trying, they, they get these little tests they have to do and they've got to meet these challenges and stuff like that well then the women start dying and um, all fingers are pointing to to Rosa you know everybody's thinking oh you know she's got to be the one that's doing these things and they would get together and discuss it and stuff like that um, and that's all I'm going to pretty much tell you about the story I don't want to give anything away after you get you know, past the slow parts of this book, um, it does start to pick up. It does start to get a little bit more interesting. Um, and I really end up enjoying this story. And I enjoyed, um, you know, the slight little twists, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, but it did, it did start to get a little more fluid. Um, I ended up reading this one... Hmm, I didn't write that down. I think it was four stars. I think I rated it four stars. Okay, so the next book that I read was The Carnival of Lost Souls, and this is by Laura Quimby. This is her debut novel. There is supposed to be more books to this. This is like the Handcuff Kid series or something. Um, it is a middle grade, but in this book we're following Jack, and Jack is really infatuated with magic. He he does really good tricks with handcuffs. He can get out, get out of handcuffs pretty easy. So the one thing about um, Jack is that he has been put into, uh, he's in the system and he, and he doesn't have his parents anymore. And he gets, you know, from one foster care to the next foster care and he's just really getting tired of moving around. Well, 
his sponsor or coach or whoever um, thinks that she finally found the right place for him and is with the professor. And the professor also kind of likes, you know, magic and stuff. Um, but he learns a story from the professor that he bartered his soul with this guy named Musini, who is supposed to be this mad magician. And um, Jack ends up with him. And that is pretty much the story. I'm not going to get into what's with Jack when he's with Musini. Um, but it was a really cute story. I really enjoyed Jack's character. And I really enjoyed the whole Carnival of Lost Souls, um, which is a, a huge part in this book. And the fluidity of the story was fantastic. And also, you know, it's got like the, the, the decorated edges and just everything about it was, was really cool. And they've got these um, black pages that are like, uh, poetry and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed the story. It's really, really fun. And when the second one finally comes, there's there's nothing, I haven't found anything about it. I will be picking it up and reading it. This was really cute. Okay, the next book that I read was, let me find it, find it, A Not So Meat Cute. This is by Megan Quinn. This is the series of the Kane Brothers, and there's three books right now. And in this one, we're following Lottie and Huxley. Those are the two. Now, Lottie um, has a sister, Kelsey. And Kelsey's out of her home, but Lottie's not. She's still with her mom because she's in this kind of, you know, job. And she gets some devastating news. So she ends up um, talking to her sister saying, I'm just going to go walk around and find a rich husband. You know, so she decides to take a walk, and she walks into one of the ritzy neighborhoods, and that's when she bumps into Huxley. Now, Huxley got himself into a little bit of a jam um, trying to get this. He's in real estate, and he's trying to get the business of this pretty well-known guy who's got a lot of real estate that needs some work. And Huxley is trying to get his business, and he tells a little white lie so he could be on a more personal level with um, this guy and says that he's married or he's got a fiance and she is also pregnant because this businessman is also got a fiance and she's pregnant. I think they're actually married though. Um, and that's the little white lie he tells and he bumps into Lottie and that's where the story begins. So that's all I'm going to tell you. This is such a fantastic romantic comedy. If you guys like rom-coms, oh my gosh, I laugh so hard. Now, it does get pretty spicy. So if you're not into that spicy stuff, if you can't read the spicy stuff, you might not want to read this. But the the laughing parts just makes it worth it to me. Um, so I ended up reading this five stars. It was It was fantastic. She is a great writer. Okay, and then the next one I picked up was So Not Meant to Be, which is book two of the Kane Brothers series. And in this one, we're following Lottie's sister, Kelsey, and then Huxley's brother, JP. Now, in that first book, in A Not So Meet Cute, um, JP does do a little bit of flirting with Kelsey, you know, and they, they're, um, they're letting them work with them because... Uh, Kelsey's got her own little business and they're going to supply the Kane brothers with things that they need. Um, and so JP is always saying, well, you know what, you know, we can't be friends. We're, we work together kind of thing. He just wants kind of like a one night stand and Kelsey, she's looking for the real deal. You know, she wants to be able to find someone that she feels safe with and feels loved by and maybe she can settle down with in the future. Um, and she says JP is not that person. So they're bumping heads all the time. She's trying to distance herself from him. And then finally he does start to distance himself from her. Um, but things come to a head and that's the story. I'm not going to give anything else on that one. Also another five star read, another hysterical read. And again, pretty spicy. Third book that I read also on my Kindle was Divine Rivals. And this one is by 
I didn't put it down. It's right here. Um, and this one, you're following Iris. And Iris, this is kind of like historical fantasy. Um, I haven't read a whole lot of historical fantasies, but this one was pretty good. So you got Iris, who is a writer for this newspaper. And she has a brother who is, is fighting in the war. Now, the war is between the gods. The gods have woken and they're having a, and they're having a war right now. So you're either on this god side or this god side, and so her brother is fighting in that war. And Iris has an enemy that she works with in this in this place, and he's always making her life hard. And they're both going up to. They're working hard to get this columnist position, and um, he's just always fighting her constantly and, and throwing things in her way. Well, Iris is missing her brother, so she's writing letters, and she's putting them in her wardrobe, and they disappear. So she's imagining her brother is getting these letters when it's actually Roman, who is her arch nemesis at work. Um, he is getting her letters, and then he knows it's her, but she doesn't know it's him. So they just start writing back and forth, and they start forming this relationship in letters, and she starts to have feelings for Roman, not knowing that it's this person she despises the most. Um, fantastic story. I absolutely loved it. Um, the fluidity was great. And um, it did start out a little slow in places. But, you know, once it got going, I absolutely loved it. And it was brilliant. Um, I ended up rating that one four stars. And then the next book that I read was A Long Time Coming, which is book three to the Kane Brothers by Megan Quinn. And this one we're following Breaker, who is brother, the brother number three, because it's Huckley, JP, and, and Breaker. Um, and Breaker is best friends with Leah. And they have been, like, stuck together for many, many years together, ever since college. And now she's engaged to be married and Breaker's trying to deal with this. You know, he didn't really think romantically about Leah, not on a conscious level. Um, but then when she, he finds out that she's engaged, things get a little harder and he starts thinking about different things and, a, and being on a different level with Leah now. And he doesn't quite know how to tell her that, hey, I really kind of like you. And Leah, she was irritating sometimes because you know just the way she would kind of push breaker away sometimes like he didn't understand now the thing with Leah is that her fiance is not that fiance that is a hundred percent in he is married to his work already and to top that off his mother is a monster in law so She's having to deal with that. I can understand why she gets a little pushy, a little angsty. Um, so this is pretty much Breaker and Leah's story. And I'm not going to tell you, go any further into it. You guys can probably figure that out. Again, very comical. Great laughter. I absolutely loved it. More spice. But it is a fantastic series. I've absolutely enjoyed this entire series. That was also a five star for me. And then the last book that I ended up reading was On a Quiet Street. This is by Serafina Nova Glass. Um, this one, I read the prologue and I'm like, oh, I really like the way the prologue sounds. And then you get to a little bit of a slow part, but then it really picks up. Um, in this book, we're, we're following three main characters. We're following Cora, and Cora believes that her husband Finn is cheating on her. We're following Paige who lost her son to an accident, but she thinks it was murder. And then we got Georgia, who is this quiet girl, who they were told she's one of those women who, I don't know what, what the term is, but she doesn't want to go outside. She's got to stay home to, to be safe. And those are our three main characters. Um, and these three manage to strike up a relationship, and they become friends, um, I don't want to tell you anything else. So, this is kind of like the struggle 
for all three of these women and and the ties that bind them together. So there's some great, a, a great twist in this one that I really enjoyed. Um, I really like the characters. I, I gotta say Paige is probably one of my favorite characters in this book. And then probably Cora. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty good. I ended up rating this book four stars. And that is what I read for the month of June. Nine books. I think that was pretty good. Um, that's probably pretty much my average right now. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed all of those. Um, I wanted to let you guys know there won't be any more videos for this week because we are traveling to Ohio um, to visit my family I haven't seen in a while. And it's going to be really a really fun time I think we won't be back till next Tuesday we're not leaving until later this week but we won't be back till next Tuesday and with me having my grandson from tomorrow Monday Tuesday and Wednesday is going to be too hard to do videos in that time if I can I'll sneak one in but don't count on it so anyway back to the books if any of you have read any of these books let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you for staying tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.